All right, so this day has finally come where I'm going to go ahead and change the second woofer on the left channel speaker. Right channel already changed just because I was the one that was given the distortion. But now, after listening to some songs and changing on the receiver, left channel, right channel, I noticed that this left channel really was not the same as the right. And of course it's not, literally it isn't. So went ahead and ordered the second identical speaker so that we have a matched pair. Now, the box it came in is not the box that the speaker actually is. So that's a weird thing. So uh, the speaker exchange sent out another, and I, I can look at it and see it's the same one that I changed before. But the box that came in, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the speaker I asked for. It's got this Blast King Pro Series. That's not what it is, unless it is what it is, and it's just, that's what I got in the other one. But it sounds good. So I took the speaker out of the box and, uh, you know, made sure that it was the same thing. It has a, BW, a PWK sticker on it, which I thought was kind of laughable, but I'm going to change it, see what we get, what it, what it ends up being. So anyway, that's it. Um, I'm going to try to put this together. This video is not something I wanted to do because I get so many comments in my previous videos about changing this woofer so many people have so many feelings and whatever but i just recently got a comment from another um viewer lb stringfellow who was like hey it's your speaker you know i've been doing this for 20 years forget the haters let them feel what they feel and it's true you didn't buy this i did it's mine i own it I do what i want to do and uh and if it sounds good to me then it sounds good to me Everybody else who hears it on YouTube only really hears their own speakers. They're not hearing mine. They're hearing a representation of mine in their own speakers through YouTube compression, yada, 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 all the others. So I wanted to see if I can, and I will do a little clip here showing what I heard that made me say, wow, I really have to change the second speaker. Now I'll add that onto this video as well. But here's the intro. All right. Going to do it. Both speakers will be the same with now. Do a, little, do a little burning. Of course, this one's a little bit behind that one. Nonetheless, uh, I'm, I'm hoping it works out really well. All right, let's continue. Okay, guys, so I'm starting to do a little part two. Moving on with this, the progression of this video and doing a little testing before filming this portion now. And just here trying to reproduce what I heard before. So what I had before was brought on my iPad and I was actually listening to Cobuzz, but my free trial, my period is over now. So I no longer have Cobuzz. I'm back to Spotify, but I'm listening to the same song. And previously just listening to on my iPad, um, Cobuzz with a with a cable actually plugged in directly to my receiver when I heard the distortion before. So it's a little bit different now because now I'm not listening to Cobuzz, but Spotify. And I've tried it with my audio quest, um, Dragonfly. And with Dragonfly, I heard no distortion. I guess maybe some of it was cleaned up with the DAC. But so I decided not to play use the dragonfly and just connect right to the cable and there is some difference in the sound between the right channel and the left but i don't hear the distortion i was hearing before so i'm torn now not sure what to do but i'm going to play some near field for you and uh see how it sounds on youtube so let's just take a look here so i have my dragonfly black but I'm not using that first. I'm gonna try without it, just a regular uh, um, headphone cable, three, three and a half cable, 3.5 cable, directly plugged into the headphone jack on the end. So we're listening to Musical Genocide by Gregory Porter, and it happens right around between 145 seconds and two minutes, somewhere in that, that period of time, about 15, 20 second 
window. I'm using my techniques and it has a nice uh, uh, balance control left and right, which I don't have on my D9. So that's nice that I can actually separate this. Um, it's kind of a touch thing, so you got to feel it, but that's balance right there. So we'll start balanced and listen to both. And I'm going to switch right to left. So what I'll do, uh, let's just move the track back just a little bit further. And I'm going to try to bring it up a little higher. So let's just do a basic test, listen to both together. I'll stop it and then we'll hear them separately. All right, let's try that. Side. This is not for me. I won't let it be. No musical genocide. I know that's kind of hard to do, but that's both playing together. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Let's move, move it back, to, back to about 140 to 140, 101 about a minute 40, about right there. Okay, can you see that? And I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try the right speaker first. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my balance all the way to right, all the way right. And let's just listen to the right speaker. Okay, right channel only, same song. Then we'll switch it and do left channel. All right, here we go. Musical genocide. Mm -hmm. Give me a blues song. Tell the world what's wrong. And what about the gospel saying heavenly messages of love and war? That was the right channel. Let's go right on over here. Left channel, same thing. I'm gonna switch all the way to left. And just do the left channel this time. And let me back up my song back again. So we're playing it from about 140, mini 40 to about 215. So about 30 seconds or so of the song. Which hopefully YouTube will let me do. All right, so this is the left channel. And this is the one. All right, so make sure I explain that. The right channel has already been switched to the replacement woofer, already re-switched. Left channel has the original, the original PWK woofer from 1976. This is the original. That is the one that's been replaced. You just heard that. Now we're gonna hear the original PWK. All right, same track, same way, just wired. And we'll try it again with the audio quest. So you'll hear it about four times, I guess. Well, actually five with the first being together. All right, here we go. Uh, left channel only. Near field. Inga. Musical genocide. Mm -hmm. Give me a blues song. Tell the world what's wrong. And what about the gospel singing? Heavenly messages of love and war. So that was the original PWK only and write the new replacement woofer from uh, Speaker Exchange. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, change things up just a little bit and I'm going to unplug the straight in cable and I'm gonna plug it into my Dragonfly, AudioQuest Dragonfly Black and plug that in and play it with this DAC. The good thing about the AutoQuest stack, you see it goes, everyone's on standby, and then it changes the colors 
um, it will pass the the DAC information from the iPad to the DAC responsibilities for the for the Dragonfly, the audio course Dragonfly. You can do this with an, an iOS device, but it won't work with an Android device. Android won't pass, you have to use another app. But nonetheless, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna listen to it now through the Dragonfly. Go back to a minute 40 again. And I'm going to play it, switch it all the way to the right, and do the right channel first. Play the same track again with the DAC. All right, let's try that. All right, here we go. This is the Dragonfly on the right channel where the speakers, the woofer's already been replaced. Genocide. Mm -hmm. Give me a blues song. Tell the world what's wrong and what about the gospel saying? Heavenly messages of love and war. the left channel and I don't know if this is confusing or not it probably is but this is what I'm doing same thing roll it back to a minute 40 minute 40 I'm gonna switch in case you want to see this I am actually I'm switching all the way to the left left channel left speaker using the dragonfly black and we're starting again from a minute 40 into Musical Genocide by Gregory Porter. And go. Musical Genocide. Mm -hmm. Give me a blues song. Tell the world what's wrong. And what about the gospel saying? Heavenly messages of love and war. So that was uh, Left Channel, original, original PWK, replaced speaker exchange. I don't know if you can hear the difference. Honestly, I don't hear the difference that I heard before. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm caught now. Let me think about it a little bit more and I'll continue this video. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, open them. What is this? <laughs> well, you just gotta, you gotta open it. Yeah, look at it. Take it back. What? What do you mean? Don't you like it? Take it back. What? You, you don't like it? Why would you think I like this? Fine. I will keep it for myself. No, I'm keeping it. Video. 
and videos. So this is an interview. And there are three important things about it. Number one, it's an interview with John, and it was pretty impromptu, so he's just giving his answers right off the top. Two, John is going to be talking about speaker building, and specifically he's going to be mentioning the speaker speaker build. And so uh, if you want to see video of that, there's some at the beginning and there's also some at the end. So stay tuned for the whole video and the video. Number three, if you have questions about the speaker build, let me know in the comments and I can follow up with John and try and get some answers for that. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the video. Yeah, I, you know, I think that there's segments of audio files. Love music, you know music, right? And um, I'm on the geekier end of audio files, where I love the engineering of sound. I'm a builder, and I absolutely love to listen to the results of audio engineering. Um, so yes, the shorter answer is yes. I would consider myself an audio file, more technically inclined than musically. Mm. It's been 18 years, I would say, uh, that I have, I had a friend, his name's Mick Burlington, and he had a Marantz uh, receiver uh, with um, a, an early surround sound system, five channel with the subwoofer, and uh, which really, literally and figuratively uh, opened my eyes and my ears to the technical prowess of uh, high definition leave to go and get a pry tool to pry open the spaces but this thing ended up cutting my doggone thumb with a razor blade inside my tool kit reaching in for this thing and I'm trying to wedge it in here find a way to wedge in here because this thing is on tight Tight, tight, tight. That pride open. Because there is a uh, silicone in there to hold that down. So I'm going to thumb. Do you know what a sleeper is? A sleeper, if you're not aware, is the idea that from the outside it looks normal, unremarkable, just kind of plain. But when you actually get it so open up, it's a performer, it's a monster, it's a beast. And the Philharmonic Audio Affordable Accuracy Plus speaker is a sleeper. Huh, you can see what they were drawing on here. The Philharmonic Audio, you're not so alone. Uh, the they're not a huge operation. The clocks, uh, but they were cut but originally. One of the things that they're really well known for is a speaker called the BMR, uh, which is a See some debris. speaker that uh, has been reviewed by Aaron's Audio Corner, Audioholics, and um, just a fantastic speaker by all accounts. And I was actually really interested in reviewing it, so I actually reached out to uh, Dennis Murphy over at uh, Philharmonic Audio, and I said, hey, can I review the BMR? He said, unfortunately, I don't have a BMR to send you, but I do have this other speaker kit Pretty clean. that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Let's take a look. First of all, it is a kit. So um, we're going to go over the general dimensions. Um, so it's about nine inches wide, pretty clean. About eleven inches deep and about fourteen inches high. It weighs about sixteen pounds. It's a two. It is that time again for another audio component review with your I've third favorite host, this time. me, Jason. And as promised, we are going to do the third and final installment of the Ascend Acoustics Sierra line, the Sierra 2EF. Okay, so I'm not sure if I've been recording. I don't think so. All right, but anyway, off camera, hopefully, I think, I've been unscrewing 
the old original speaker woofer and the catch on uh, on the original is that this the speaker wire and it's actually unscrewed now so I can slide this forward is that you've got uh, complete circle connections there I don't know what that the actual term is for this but the circle connections for um, for the woofer and you have to actually the screw so I'm saving all my screws and the screw for that is a flat head that goes through and then it goes into the back of the cabinet two two screw holes there and it into the the the, the block that connects to the crossover on the other side so it's a little tricky so what I'm replacing with is just a, a C or U connector so that I don't have to worry about that I can just slip it on and, and tighten it down hopefully and that's what I did with the other one and it should be okay so anyway it's coming out and there we have it <laughs> needs to be cleaned up Oh yeah, a lot of 40 years worth of dust built up in it. But I mean, otherwise, it really doesn't look bad. Take a closer look at that later. Okay, clean this up and put the new woofer in. Whew, let's see. Definitely needs to be cleaned up. Let me get the vacuum. and debris removed getting hard to get up okay we covered off on the wonderful entry level Sierra 1 okay, gonna have the to... mid level Sierra 2 and the latest <sighs> and greatest that, revision that from Dave Fabricant is the made a 2 of setting this on the ground and the making speaker a stain itself, on my carpet. The dimensions, I'm not make that everything's a carryover. You still have the wonderfully very tight, inert bamboo multi layered cabinet, still with all the driver components combined. You have a 20 pound uh, bookshelf speaker. The Rawl tweeter is the carryover from the Sierra 2 basically that 60 millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, wonderful raw tweeter, another proprietary blended tweeter, something that you couldn't get off Damn the shelf the at uh, Madison Sound or Dayton Audio. What makes this the EX oh, version of A2? When it comes down to it, Dave really wanted to kick, kick it up a notch. When they went from the Sierra 1 to the Sierra 2, they lost some of that deeper bass magic with having to redesign the crossover to really pair well with the faster, lighter, raw tweeter. 
and by having a faster and lighter <laughs> mid-band woofer, it gave up a little bit of the of the, the lower end and it cut off so the hertz a little bottom. bit higher. So that two, two holes, the right there. two, that cut off at 41 hertz and was an 87 dB 6 ohm speaker. I just need to put the new woofer after, in. There. After about a year, another so year and a half of so I just want to make sure of where this was. For their websites, Dave went back to see us and said, look, I need a, another driver from you guys, something that's really going to kick this up a notch, and something that will help the data, the ribbon tweeters, they like to be crossed over much higher, they cannot go as low as traditional textile dome tweeters, so you're, you're crossed over around that 3.5k range. During my break-in time with so the speakers, I played two, lots three, of test tones. Four, and I did some some really low-level sweeps. I was able to get again the video for you guys on that. I pulled off a a 20 hertz to 200 hertz sweeper, and then some warble tones to where it really works that whooper out. And you guys can see this thing in full action. Lots of extension is available with, within this woofer. And then I also did my own trying to nail down, okay, where, where is the in-room frequency response? How low can I get with the 2EX? So, hearkening back to the SEER 1s, in-room response was at about 38 to 39 hertz. With the twos, I was getting 39 to 40 hertz in-room response where the bass still had some tonality to it. With these, with this woofer, I had a clean 35 hertz. Now, I, it says it goes down to 33k. Go back. I was struggling to hear the 32, 33 in my room. I would be more conservative and say that the 35 hertz was what I'm comfortable attributing to what the bass response was in my room and, and hearing a clean tone. If you can pause your Wi-Fi anytime with the Cox Panoramic Wi-Fi app and enjoy a sweet little break. Watch the Oscars live on ABC, YouTube TV, try it for During my playback with the Sierra 2 EX, I've had three integrated amplifiers on hand, and across three weeks, I plugged in all three different integrated amplifiers, each integrated having a full week of play with the Sierra 2 EX. I've got this, this name that I've been breaking in for the last two weeks. I have the name 5, 5SI. This is a 60 watt integrated amplifier. I have the Peachtree Deco 125 Sky that I reviewed a few weeks ago. That is a Class D 120 watt amplifier. And then my long term standby that I've had since I've started this channel is my wonderful Unison Research Unico P. It's a Stage 2 modified 50 watt hybrid integrated amplifier where it has the two preamp stage and the MOSFET power stage. So that is the, the, from a power perspective, on the lowest end, working with this speaker, no problems whatsoever. When you've got the 50 watts of that integrated and the 60 watts of this name, computer, no worries with that. It's a basement lights to 100%. At one watt efficiency. That's not too I played back most of my music to where it's gonna be critical within this. Computer. Set basement lights to 
Well, screw it down. Okay, that was hard. <laughs> but I finally got to, trying to get the block in. All right, so let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit or not. Nope, cannot zoom in and out. Oh, well. All right, but anyway, that's why the screw in on that side. Terminals there, and on the other side where the crossover is, here. Let's see if I can get to this block. Oh, go this way. And you see that? That's the block. So I just had to, had to get a little helping hand from my daughter there to hold one in place and screw in the other. And a little sound test. And you see we've got, got, we've got sound here. I do not agree. This is not for me. No. Musical genocide. Not commit, nor will I submit I to now. musical genocide. This is not for me. I won't let it be. No musical genocide. Whew. Give me your blue. Sound sommelier. Thank you. 
originals. Such a clever one about the latest facts. I admit. All right. Here we are. Let's do a quick sound test together. Okay. So, the originals on the floor, and the new ones are inside. Whew. Hmm. Let's change up our song, maybe. Try something else. Find something different. Wow. What? Oh boy. I don't even know what to play now. Smile to row, how about that? Still on the left channel. Let's change it. Test tomorrow when it's daytime and I can be a little louder. All right, I'm tired. 